that are watching online right now we pray father in jesus name that you begin to release your anointing in their very homes let them feel your presence like they've never felt it or experienced it before i pray father in jesus name that you begin to unclog their atmosphere if they've had a heavy day today if they've been attacked if they have been going through challenges if they've been battling with the enemy struggling i pray father even right now in the name of jesus that you release your peace in their homes even the peace of god that passes all understanding the joy of the lord which is their strength i pray father in jesus name that there will be a release of your glory in their very homes in their cars in their jobs wherever they are right now just release your glorious presence in their atmosphere and let them feel you and let them get prepared to hear what the spirit of the Lord is going to say tonight. I believe that you're going to do a great work tonight, that you're going to speak to each and every one of us. And I pray, Father, in Jesus name that you give us hearing ears, ears that will be able to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Give us a receptive heart that we may receive the word of God, that it may be planted deep on the inside of our hearts so that we may be able to take it and begin to apply it grant us the grace to not be forgetful hearers but doers of your word and father we just want to say thank you we worship you tonight we bless you we give you glory and we give you honor in the matchless name of jesus hallelujah while we're in his presence right now i want to release a blessing on you your family your loved ones i just want you to wherever you are I want you to get into a position where you can receive lift your hands if you have to wherever you are I just want you to receive this blessing. Hallelujah. I decree over your life right now in the name of Jesus that you are blessed and that you can't be cursed. For Christ, he has redeemed you from the curse. I therefore decree and declare that you are blessed coming in. You're blessed going out. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're above only. You're not beneath. You are the head and you're not the tail. You are the lender and you're not the borrower. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, I therefore decree over your life that no weapon, no witchcraft, no voodoo, no sorcery, no evil intent, no purpose, plot, plan, or scheme of the enemy, no sickness, no infirmity, disease, and no virus that is formed against you will be able to prosper. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, I decree over your life that good things are about to happen for you, that doors are about to swing open for you. That shackles are about to be broken off of your hands and off of your feet in Jesus' mighty name. That mountains are about to be removed from your life. Doors are swinging open in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. You're about to begin to touch things. And those things that you put your hands to and touch is going to prosper, flourish, grow, and be successful in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Hallelujah. I decree that over your life and I want you to receive that even right now. And, and as we get ready to receive this word, I want you to get yourself in a position where you can receive because I believe that God through this word is about to do something powerful and mighty in your life. In Jesus matchless name. Amen. 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 Well, to God be the glory. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to Let's Talk with Pastor Gavin Taylor. You know, tonight I have a, a very, very special guest. You know, I have, um, you know, call him Big Mike. Big Mike with me tonight. Pastor Mike, you know. And um, I've known him for, for, some, for some time now. You know, I was thinking about it. You know, I remember when I was coming up in ministry and I was just getting started out. And, um, you know, Pastor had me, we did a basketball team. <laughs> And we had a basketball team with the other LOJ churches and stuff like that, you know. And I got a team of people from LOJ. And Big Mike was one of, was one of the guys on the team. He was a young guy. I don't even know. Were you, were you in high school yet? He wasn't even in high school yet. And uh, he played on the team, man. And, uh, and uh, he was a knucklehead, man. <laughs> but, you know, what's, ama what's amazing is this, you know, because I was a knucklehead when I came to LOJ. <laughs> so... You know, so I, I recognize it immediately. But I always tell people, you know, never give up on kids because, you know, 
what you put into them eventually is going gonna, is gonna to come back. You know, the Bible talks about the fact that, you know, if you raise up a child in a way that they should go, and when they are old, they won't depart from the faith. You know, so we look at our children, you know, when they're crazy and they're doing stupid things and stuff like that, and we think that they're never going to be anything, or whatever. I don't know what we think. But God, he proves us wrong every time. I remember when I was young, I was the black sheep in my family. Nobody thought I was going to do anything or be anybody. And, um, you know, look at me now. When God puts his hands on you and he begins to do things, it's just amazing. So I look at Mike and how he's grown up and, um, and the mighty man of God that he is today. And I'm like, God, you are just so awesome and you're so amazing. So it is my privilege, it's my honor to bring up Pastor Mike Spence as he comes up. God bless you. <laughs> Good morning, family. Y'all have to excuse my voice. I was just yelling at the top of my lungs when I was around a bunch of kids. But um, I was praying today. I was honored to be here. So first, I want to just first and foremost give God's blessing um, to Pastor Gavin for even allowing me to be here. It's an honor to be here. Um, just even to even see this blessing and walk in the fullness of it is a blessing. Because like you said, we were at the youth group playing basketball just all over the place and it was it was a blessing to be there and also just um, want to send um, our blessings from Phillipsburg Alliance that's where I'm the youth pastor at I'm blessed um, but you know I'm, I'm a LOJ kid through and through um, Pastor Gail, Pastor Jason Alvarez are the people that helped groom me you know great mentors um, you know Reverend Dave, Reverend Willie, all these guys, Reverend Tom, Reverend Dwight so I'm blessed to be here just had a great conversation with Pastor Roy so I want to hop into today's word it won't be long I'm gonna be brief Make sure we get in and get out of here. Are you good? All right. If you're good, make sure you type it in the chat. Big Mike, I'm good. All right. So now, when I was sitting down, right, I was asking God. I was like, I like to have conversations with God before I get into anything, right? My mentor always says to me, Mike, there are three voices that you have to understand in your life. There is your voice, there's God's voice, and there's the voice of the enemy. The quicker you understand which voice is which, the better you are in your walk. So when I was sitting down, deciding about what I should speak here today, I love throwing ideas out there. I love having like a brainstorming, a brain thinking conversation with God. So I said, God, all right, I gotta have this conversation about millennials and ministry. So I said, God, how about if I come from this angle in the Bible? And that first day was um, David and Goliath. And there's three things that a millennial could gain from the story of David and Goliath. One thing is this, David's father asked him to go bring lunch to his brothers. A lot of us think that this is some great esoteric elusive thing that will lead us to our purpose. But no, it was David being honorable to his father, just bringing lunch to his brothers that led him to his purpose. See, we think it's the outstanding that will lead us to our purpose, but what if we're obedient to the ordinary that will lead us to our purpose? So then I said, all right, that's one lesson that a millennial can get from that. Be obedient to the simple things because the simple things can lead you to your purpose. The second thing that we can always get from David is that when David went to Saul to speak about the opportunity to fight in Goliath, Saul questioned him. Saul was knocking him. He was saying, yo, man, you bugging. Like, this guy has been fighting since his youth. You think you really got a chance? Now, I'm going to give you guys a visual. Um, you can't really see how tall I am. Just know that they had to adjust this camera just so that we could be eye to eye here right now. So you may think that we're eye to eye. We are virtually, but we're not eye to eye in person. But they say that Goliath, a lot of theologians debate that he was up to about nine feet tall. Now, I am six foot ten, and I'm going to be honest with you right now. I cannot lie in the house of the Lord. If I was asked to fight Goliath, I am not fighting Goliath. I'm not fighting nobody nine feet tall and that strong enough than four of me. But David, who some people believe that he was shorter than six feet, was still willing to fight Goliath. And what I think that most millennials could learn from Saul doubting David is that a lot of times you have to recognize that God does not call to qualify, but he qualifies the call. And sometimes we'll block our blessings, we'll block our opportunities because we're mistaking somebody else's voice for God's voice. It doesn't matter what the world say, what does God says. It's because my mentor always says this to me, Mike, can you still follow through on it even if everybody around you is saying no? Can you trust that still small voice of God that is guiding you through the process? Can you trust that you heard from God? And the last lesson I believe that any millennial could get from David and Goliath, is that when David agreed and when Saul said, all right, we're going to let you go do this, Saul tried to put his armor on him. And it says that David was all over the place because he tried to put this armor on him. 
And I believe that a lot of us are putting on the wrong armor to fight God's battles. And it's not that you are not equipped for this battle. It's not that God did not call you to this battle. It's that you have the wrong armor on. And that's what's messing us up because for us, the armor is not physical. For us, the armor is mental. For us, the armor is spiritual. For us, the armor is psychological. We put it on the wrong armor and therefore, we're fighting the right battle the wrong way. And my question to you is, I'm not asking you to put your mom armor on. I'm not asking you to put grandma armor on. I'm not asking you to put the person down the block armor on. I'm saying, how has God called you to win this battle? It's because, yes, people's opinions may matter, but they don't have the final say over what God has called you to do. But then after I broke down all these reasons to God why I think that this would be a good message, he said, nah, son, that's not where I want you to go. So I was like, dang, God, like, you going to switch it up on me? I think this is a good message. He said, nah, that's not where I want you to go. I said, all right, God, well, how about Mephibosheth? So I started talking about Mephibosheth. I broke down the points, how Mephibosheth's name means from the mouth of shame and how he was located in a place called No Pasture. And Mephibosheth represents a lot of us millennials, if we're being honest. You're probably saying, yo, Mike, how does that so? It's because Mephibosheth was in a situation where his whole family was dead, lost everybody. And the nurse picked him up. Her intentions were good. But while trying to flee, she drops him, and he's paralyzed. And if a lot of us millennials, if a lot of us adults, period, regardless of age of being honest, we find ourselves in a place of Mephibosheth where someone meant well, but they dropped us. And it wound up hurting us more than it helped us. And they don't have no reason. Yes, the nurse had a good reason. She was trying to flee. Because rightfully so, at that time, when God has called someone to execute an area, they weren't just executing men. Sometimes he was saying to kill women and children as well. So this nurse was in her right mind to say, yo, let's get out of here. But in the process, somehow, by picking up a fib, it says she dropped him, and he's paralyzed. And now he was once in the kingdom. Now he's in a place with no pasture. I don't know about you guys. You guys could play church. You got like you got it all together. But for me, to be in a place where I knew I was inside of a king's house to now I'm in a place where there is no pasture, that hurts me even more than being paralyzed. But then here he is. David finds himself wanting to be honorable. Wanting to honor the house of Saul and Mephibosheth names come up. And David not only restores him, but he gives him more than he could ever ask for. And for everybody that's listening to this, I know you feel forgotten. I know you feel gone. I know you feel like you have been broken. I know you feel like you have dropped the ball or your family dropped the ball on you. But I'm here to tell you that God can restore you to that rightful place. And one story that comes to mind is one day this father and this son, how they make money is they go down to the local river and they fill these big vases up with water and they bring it back home, they put it in the pot and they boil it to sell fresh water in the community. They do this every day without fail because this is how they make money in their country. And then one day while bringing this vase up, the sun slips and drops the vase. Now the vase had a slight crack in it. And the father said, hey son, we're not gonna throw it away. I can still have use for this vase. Let me carry the vase because I know how to carry it. So they kept carrying the vase every day, but when the son, when they get to their destination, every time the son will recognize that, yo, dad, the vase is halfway full, and my vase is full. The dad said, come on, let's keep doing it every week. And then the son got frustrated after a month. He said, yo, dad, I can't do this no more, dad. Like, yo, you trying to teach me a lesson? I got the lesson, dad, come on, you tripping. He said, hey, son, um, what you didn't recognize was that, yo, that vase that you thought was broken is not actually broken, son. See, I planted seeds along the way of the path that we walk every day so that the water that was leaking from that broken vase was able to water those seeds. Now we're able to sell flowers along with this water. And he says, son, that just because you think it's broken does not mean that I can use the brokenness. And a lot of us are quitting on life because we feel like we know that God can't use our brokenness. And how about we take our brokenness to a whole God who can make everything perfect? But then God was like, nah, son, that's a good story, but I don't want to go there either. So I said, all right, all right guys, where you want to go? So then God brought me to a humbling scripture, and I want to take y'all there. Um, turn to your Bibles, and I'm going to be real quick with you guys, um, if I ain't been quick enough, to 2 Chronicles 10. 
And listen, look, I'm from Irvington. I grew up in Irvington, Orange, and Nork, and I heard some ghetto names, but I'm trying to tell you now, I don't know if these names in the Bible are ghetto or just hard to pronounce, but we're going to just go with it, right? And this is about Rehoboam. This is about Solomon's son. Now, walk with me for a second, right? It said, Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had gone there to make him king. When Jeroboam, son of Nebat, heard this, he was in Egypt where he had fled from King Solomon. He returned from Egypt, so they sent for Jeroboam. And all of Israel went to Rehoboam and said to him, Your father put a heavy yoke on us, but now lighten the harsh labor and the heavy yoke he put on us, and we will serve you. Rehoboam answered, Come back to me in three days. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who served his father, Solomon, during his lifetime. How would you advise me to answer these people, he asked. They replied, if you will be kind to these people and please them and give them a favorable answer, they will always be your servant. But Rehoboam rejected the advice the elders gave him and consulted the young men who had grown up with him and were serving him. He asked them, what is your advice? How should we answer these people who say to me, lighten the yoke your father put on us? The young men who had grown up with him replied, the people have said to you, your father put a heavy yoke on us, but make our yoke lighter. Now tell them, my little finger is thicker than my father's waist. My father laid on you a heavy yoke, and I will make it even heavier. For my father scores you with whips, I will score you with scorpions. Three days later, Jeroboam and all the people returned to Rehoboam. As the king had said, come back to me in three days. The king answered them harshly, rejecting the advice of the elders. He followed the advice of the young men and said, my father made your yoke heavy. I will make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people. For this turn of events was from God to fulfill the word of the Lord had spoken to Jeroboam, son of Nebat. While all of Israel saw the king refuse to listen, they answered the king, what do, we, what do we have in David? What, what share do we have in David? What part in Jesse's son? To the tents, Israel, look after your own house, David. So all of Israel went home. But as for the Israelites who were living in the towns of Judah, Rehoboam ruled over them. So, and here's this, the last part, the last verse. So Israel had been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. And that ends the scripture reading I want to highlight you guys with today, right? And here's the thing I want to point out to you guys. One is this, right? This is one note. You guys want to take notes, any note takers. The first note is this. Not everybody that has a mouth deserves your ear. I'm going to say that again for everybody who's listening online because y'all probably forgot it. Not everybody that has a mouth deserves your ear, especially for you guys who are all in leadership. You probably say, well, Mike, I don't own, I don't, I don't own a business. I don't own a ministry. But no matter where you find yourself in life, you are a leader. And the reason why I say this is because the most important person you can ever lead in your life is yourself. So I don't care if you have children or you don't have children, you have a ministry, you don't have a ministry, the most important person you're leading every day of your life is yourself. But I'm here to tell you this, that not everybody that has a mouth deserves your ear. And it's so important for us, especially in this time where even the very elect, the Bible says even the very elect will be deceived, that we are clear on what we're supposed to take in and what we're supposed to keep. And because a lot of us are surrounded around, yes, men and around people that are going to lead us to our destiny. And what hurt this young man here was that he did what was easy instead of what was necessary. It was easy to listen to the people who you grew up with, but what was necessary was listen to the elders. The next thing is this, right, that I want you guys to grasp, right, about this, because we got to make sure that we're grabbing everything that we're going through, right, is that the next thing is this, that we should learn from this select scripture is know your positions in people's lives. One day I heard this story, right, about this coach who wanted to teach his varsity players a lesson. So what he did was he put all the starting five in opposite positions of what they would naturally play. So he put the starting center at point guard. He put the point guard at starting center. He put everybody, he switched it up, and then he put them against the JV team. Now the varsity team was sure that they were going to beat this JV team. They were going to smack them. They was not worried about it at all. But then the coach told them that no matter how much you want to, you cannot go back to the position that you naturally play. 
You have to stay in the position that I placed you. And lo and behold, despite the fact that that varsity team was talent, that they were good, they wound up losing that game because they were out of position. And a lot of us are losing in life because we have the right people in the wrong position. Which leads to our next point about this, right, is when you know who's in your life, then you know what they're able to give you. One thing I'm learning, especially being a leader, especially being just a dad, is that am I called to give this person comfort or to give them counsel? Sometimes when people sit around you and they're going through a hard time, sometimes the words that they're giving you are not counsel, they're comfort. And sometimes I have to ask myself when I'm talking to somebody right now, like, what does this person actually need right now? Yeah, they're grieving. Yeah, they're mourning. Yeah, they're coming to me. But do they want comfort or do they want counsel? And if I'm coming to someone by anything, I had to make sure, should I be going to this person about counsel to begin with? Which leads to my last two points, guys, and I'm done with you. We're going to pray and we're going to get right into the Q&A session is make sure that you seek wisdom amongst the elders. Guys, if you look at the people that I'm here, not because of I'm tall, not because I'm gifted, I'm here because I listen. Yes, God has called me. Yes, God has placed me here. Yes, I have favor, but because I listen. I remember one day I was sitting with Pastor Jay and we was at a table and we were eating and um, you know, I'm a, I'm a millennial, I'm young, so my phone's always out. And then while everybody's eating, my phone's out, and then all of a sudden, uh, Reverend Dwight, he smashed me on the side of my head, and he said, boy, put your phone away. And then when I got up, the meal was done, I walked around, I'm about to leave, he said, hey, Mike, when you're in the presence of wisdom, you should always listen, because you never know when that nugget's going to be dropped that could change your life. A lot of us, we're being honest for everybody in my age bracket, which I ain't going to tell y'all my age, because I don't want to make myself feel old, I might be on the latter part of the millennial train, but... But what I recognize is this, is that, guys, is that, listen, you never know what you can learn from somebody. The average person learns from their own mistake, but the wise learn from the mistakes of others. Your most valuable currency in life is not money, it's time. So when you learn from others, you're able to save that time to do more and to invest more into others. That's why it's so important to learn from others and don't walk with this mindset that you know it all. Because a lot of times, the people who made it further was because they learned from those who came from behind. Which leads to my last point and my final point, is I noticed something about this whole context. When this young man was approached with this problem, he went to the elders. I have no problem with that. He went to his peers. Even though they gave him bad advice, I still had no problem with that. Do you want to know what I have a huge problem with? He went to everybody but God. And guys, if we're going to go to the next level as millennials in ministry, yes, I'm not saying don't have a good circle. No, have a good circle. Have people around you that challenge you, that change you, that help push you, that help lead you to the next level. But what I'm also saying is make sure that God is your first source, not your last resort. Make sure that God is where you go all the time, not some of the time. Make sure that God is who you check in with and who you close the deal with. Make sure that God is the one that you check in with all the time regarding the matter. Because at the end of the day, you're leading his people. And if I'm going to lead somebody's people, I need to know how to lead his people. And when you go through God, when you let God be the funnel, when you let God be the mainstream, when you let God be the way, I ain't saying you're going to be perfect, but I'm saying that this young man's reality could have been that of such like his father, his great-grandfather, David. David never lost a battle in war. It's because he always sought God before. So when life comes your way, when decisions come your way, how are you going to respond? Are you going to continue to seek the affirmation and advice of others, or are you going to make sure that God has a final and first say? So, guys, I pray that this blesses you. I pray that you took your notes. I pray that it hit you where you're at. But most importantly, for us to go to the next level, we have to make sure that we get it at this level. I know for me, when anybody stayed back in school, they looked crazy. It was hard to play with them at lunchtime because it's like, yo, man, you still in the fourth grade, we're in fifth grade. But a lot of us are holding ourselves back because we refuse to get lessons in this season of life. 
It's time for promotion, not settling. Let's get these lessons so we can receive these blessings. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for so much that you're teaching us through your word. Father God, I pray that this word don't fall on shallow soil. Father God, I pray it fall on good soil. Father God, I pray we learn so much more about ourselves, Father God, but most importantly, I pray you put the right people around us. Father God, teach us how to be leaders. Teach us how to just continue to walk this thing called life through. Father God, may we not lean on our own understanding. So Father God, I pray that you sit us down so that you can be lifted up. May you be glorified. Father God, may you continue to be with us every step of the way. And Father God, may you bless this generation of not just even leaders, but most importantly of servants that are coming up behind us so we can pave the way from those who are doing the same. We pray all this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Hey, God bless you, family. This is Pastor Gavin Taylor, and I really pray that you're enjoying tonight's Let's Talk session. I'm truly getting a lot out of it, and I really, I really pray, and I hope that you're getting something out of it as well. Uh, we're just going to take just a few minutes because we just want to worship God with tithes, with offering, and special giving. You know, just after we do this, we're going to go right back to have a one-on-one -on -one session with uh, youth pastor Mike Spence. He is truly tearing it up tonight. And again, I pray that you are truly getting something out of this. But I believe that the best part is still yet to come. We're going to sit down. We're going to have a conversation. We're going to talk about some things that you guys have asked. And if you haven't had a chance to do so already, why don't you send your questions in? We're going to try to get to every single one of them. We already have a ton of them, but we're going to put them to work tonight. Amen. So at, right now, let's just worship God. Let's get this out of the way. Let's take care of blessing, you know, the Lord, honoring the Lord with our tithes and offerings. You know, the Bible says if we honor the Lord with our substance, the first fruits of all of our increase, he, the Bible says that he will cause our barns to be filled with plenty, that it will burst out with new wine. You know, that speaks of the fact that God wants to bless us both monetarily and he wants to bless us spiritually. You know, the Bible says, you know, Jesus says this, he says, give and it shall be given back unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over shall men given to your bosom. See, God wants to bless you. He wants to prosper you, but he wants us to practice principles and practice laws. And probably the greatest law that has ever been established is the law of the seed, right? That is the law of sowing and reaping. If you sow a seed, you can expect to reap a harvest. Amen. So let's just go ahead and let's do that. Let's worship God with tithes and with offerings, with special giving. I want to thank you in advance for being a blessing to this ministry, for giving, for sowing seeds. And I also ask you to do me a favor and sow a special seed tonight for, you know, Youth Pastor Mike Spence. Sow a special seed into his life. We're going to bless him tonight, but you can help us be a blessing to him. You know, he's come from a little distance and, you know, we want to put some fuel in his tank. Amen. So let's let's go ahead and bless the man of God. And so if you want to give, you can use our cash app at cash sign L-O-J-N-N. -N. You can also use our Givelify at Love of Jesus of North North. You can go to our website if you want to give. And that's at www.lojnorthnorth.org forward slash donate. And you can also give that way. So I want to thank you in advance for sowing a seed. Thank you for being a blessing. Thank you for honoring God. And I just want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for everybody that's going to sow a special seed tonight. Father, bless your people. Open up for them the windows of heaven. Pour them out blessings that they don't even have room enough to receive. Shower them with the blessings and favor of God. Give them more than enough where there is no lack. Cause them to prosper, flourish, grow, and be successful in everything that they do and everything that they put their hands to. Because they honor you, I know that you will do no less for them. And Father, for we thank you, we bless you, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, look, God bless you. Let's go sit down with, with uh, Pastor Mike. We're going to talk to him right now. We're going to get some of those questions answered. Don't tune off yet. The best part is yet to come. Anyway, I love you. God bless you. And uh, we'll see you in one second. Amen. Welcome back. Welcome back. So, um, Mike, that was so awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you so it. much for sharing that. And, and before we get started with questions, I wanted to, he said something when he was, was ministering, and I just wanted to point this out. Um, he mentioned that he was He's here because he listened. Yeah. And I, I can attest to that. You know, he has called me on multiple times and said, you know, Pastor, can we just kind of talk a little bit? Yes, I said, sure, you know. So he, he comes over and he got 
I mean, he's ready. He got questions ready. I mean, he's not trying to shoot the breeze. He's trying to get some, <laughs> he's trying to extract something. And I'm sitting there like, well, I felt like I was being interviewed or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but you know, you. When, I, when he did that, I just knew that I said, he's going to go far because he, you, you know, he's willing to learn. He's willing to listen. He don't think he know everything. Yeah. He's open to learn. So, so I wanted to just Thank you. to say that, you know, you, you said it, but I wanted to confirm that. You Thank know? you. I appreciate it. To God be the glory. Pastor Jay always said about, um, he always says it's not about what's taught, but it's about what's caught. And um, Reverend Dave always told me, he was like, yo, Mike, um, when the student, he always used this karate um, term. He says, so, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Ah, so, yeah. you know, that's how I'm just doing my job. Thank you for being willing, because not everybody that, I could want to talk, but you got to be willing. And I thank you for really being willing and pouring into me. So I thank you for that. Yeah, and, and it's... It's always an honor and privilege, and that's why, you know, I, I just make time because you, you, you're just a beautiful young man, you know. Thank you, appreciate that. So, and again, thank you for sharing. I believe we got a lot out of this, but we're going to get a whole lot more out of you tonight. Thank you, appreciate we start to, the glory. We're going to take some stuff out of you. <laughs> so, I want you to start by just telling us about your journey. Like, what led you to the decision of, of, of serving God, particularly serving in, in ministry? Um, wow. Um, I will honestly think that... Uh, I would say that I didn't have much of a choice. I had a choice at the end. <laughs> I would say that it was God really placing it in my heart and just really just guiding me. I had some solid men in my life that helped guide the way, solid people in my life that really helped guide the way. Like starting with like, man, Reverend Willie, you can't go to LOJ yeah, without, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Reverend, Willie, Reverend Dave stepped in, you stepped in, Reverend Tom. So I really had some solid men come in my life to really mold the way. And my mom always said to me sometimes, um, no matter how much headaches, which y'all know the headaches I was giving my mom. <laughs> um, it's, um, it's, she always said, Mike, there's, there's, there's something special about you. And I think that when um, I was younger, um, I always wanted a big brother. My big brothers live in a different country. They live in England and Jamaica. So I always wanted a big brother. So um, I go by this quote that says, be who you wish you had when you were younger. Mm -hmm. And I really felt like God was calling me to that, to be that to young men and young women. So I'm blessed and honored. So just seeing that there was a paucity of positive representation for young men and women, regardless of color, that's the thing that sparked it. And then God really led me there. Um, it was after graduation when I graduated from college, because I was always connected with God, went to church, did my thing. But you know, when you graduate from college and you had that question like, what's next? And you really don't know what's next. Um, that's when me and God went on this journey, and it was a blessing. And where it took full swing was I was working for the NBA one day, and um, my boss sat me down. The season is over. So for the NBA, if they for, for them to keep you on staff or anything, you have to be exceptional, or they just have to just want you to be there when the season is over. Otherwise, there's no need for you to be there. The season is over. But they usually give you some insight on whether they're going to bring you back for the next season, you know. Yeah. And um, my boss sat me down. She said, hey, Mike, because um, I was doing, like, video production and things of that nature, just, like, you know, behind-the-scenes things. She said, Mike, you're not passionate about this job. Like, this is not your passion. Um, you need to be with kids. That's what you need to go do. So go do that. And then um, she said, I'm letting you go. So then I was just, at first I was excited. I'm motivated, like, oh, all right, this is. <laughs> but then I thought about it, like, oh, so I'm not getting paid no more. So <laughs> So I was just like, all right, God. And then that's when it got real for me. And then I wound up going to the Boys and Girls Club in Union. Um, and I worked for this guy named Pastor Ron. But we, everybody knows him as Ron. Ron was just, he walked me through the journey. And then, like like I said, I really have good people in my life yeah. that really helped me. So it, it was consistent. And then my mentor, Reverend Dave, he just got me on it. And then it was just like, phew. And, and then, like, you, Pastor Jay, everybody, I, I, that's how we got going. So... <laughs> Yeah, that's how it happened for me. Just that's, losing it. That's so awesome, man. That's that's so awesome. Um, so let me ask you, like, as a young person in ministry, for millennials, right? What do you believe is the is the biggest challenge that millennials are are facing right now? Hearing the voice of God. Mm. I think that um, you know, um, I was having a conversation recently, and then um. And I had to even check myself on it. If someone says to me, God said, I leave you alone. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't. Even if I feel in my spirit that I know God ain't. Like, you know, like if someone said, Pastor Gavin, smack somebody walking down the street, I ain't gonna believe that. That's not you. Yeah. You know, so when you walk with God long enough, you kind of know, like, nah, that ain't God. Yeah. And um, I think that um, 
a lot of times I think that we had to, and I heard someone say this, that we had to discern whether we're hearing God's voice or our desires or our emotions and things like that. And I, that's been a constant theme I've been hearing lately. And I think that for millennials is really understanding like, hey, did I really hear God? Mm -hmm. Or am I saying that I heard God so that people could leave me alone? Mm -hmm. So like like I told you, like 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 you, Pastor Jay, Reverend Dave, everybody I know, Pastor Gail, like me, even me and Al, that's our role. Once someone say, yeah. God said, you leave it alone. So it's just that I think that for me, I think most millennials are struggling with the fact of just hearing the true voice of God. Mm -hmm. And also I think that probably on the same level is waiting. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you, you can make up a voice, like yeah. like go, like you could say, say it in a spooky go. <laughs> like, you know, and it's like, that ain't God saying go, that's you saying go. Right. So I think that like for me, that's why I think that probably is our biggest struggle. And I think that honestly is, is setting us back so far because now we're having to undo, now we're having to really recognize that yeah. that wasn't God. And I think that that's a huge problem for millennials in, um, in this walk. No, that's so good. And, and I agree with you. Some, somebody tell me, you know, God told me I, I back off. Yes. You know, because, you know, but you're right. You can pretty much hear. Yeah, I don't think they really. <laughs> so with that being said, as a follow up to that, you know, like, can you give them uh, millennials advice on like, how can they make sure like that they're hearing from God and oh, not just. Wow. Yeah. I, the, the best way I could tell them is the way it was given to me. Um, stay in your word. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one, that's one way God speaks is through his word. I think also making sure you have solid and wise counsel around yeah. you. Yeah. Um, like I yes. said in the message, everybody that has a mouth don't deserve your ear. Yeah. Sometimes you have to really recognize like, hey, like, you know, should I really be listening to this right now? But here's one thing that I under, I overlooked mm. in my walk about this is guarding my filters mm. in which I take in stuff. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I could easily say, yo, God is calling me to move into a mansion right now if I just went into four open houses for a mansion. It's like, you know, it's just like, uh, it's like, yeah, that's, I mean, you're inspired right now. Like, you know, like, I understand Al always tell me that, like, yo, man, make sure that, you know, it's, it's, it's room for inspiration, it's room for, you know, like, desires. So I think, but also in the same token, watching out for stuff that could make you go astray. Yeah. Um, you know, watching certain programs and certain things. It could be, it, it could dilute you from hearing the voice of God. So I say, watch. I say, like, you know, watch what you're taking in. Um, I would say that also to make sure that you have solid counsel around you and make sure you in God's word, get in His presence, get to know Him. I'm gonna share my sheep, know my voice. So you know, get into there, and make sure you understand Him. I think that's a good way to get going. No, that's that's good, and and I completely agree with that. Especially, you know, your sh the sheep know His voice. But through the word of God, yes. right? As you begin to study, you begin to, you know, meditate on the word of God, then you begin to learn his voice. In other words, you begin to learn like what he agrees with, what he disagrees with, his, his feelings on things. You get to yes. learn his word, you know, his will, you know, overall will for your life, and then that can help guide you. And then also I like, you know, making sure that you have wise counselors around you. Yes. Like you mentioned, you know, with, with Rehoboam, you yes. know, he, he consulted, you know, his, and think about this. I always think about this when I read that scripture, that these are the men that counseled his father. Yes. Now, Solomon is the wisest man that has ever been on the face of this earth. Yes. And he had counselors around him. That's facts. That was giving him counsel. And these are the same men that were counseling Solomon. And he still wouldn't even listen to these guys. Exactly. I mean, like, it's like, that just blows my mind when I think about yes. that. But it's so good to have, you know, wise counsel around you. For you know, sure. and the higher you go, it, it, it means nothing. Right. You know, I still I still want to get counsel from Pastor Jason, from Pastor Gale. I want to hear sure. from them. I want to because they've been in it longer. Yes. You know, I want to I want to learn myself, you know, so having counsel, I agree. That's important. Don't go to people and just say, I heard God. Well, I think I heard God. But what do you think about this? Yes. There's nothing wrong with that. I think yeah. that there's nothing wrong with saying that because that's what that's what helps like that's how we really get this process going and what i learned about what i love about older people in the church i won't say old people in the church because i don't want <laughs> i don't want nobody to kill me but what i learned about older people in the church is that when you've been through certain things your tolerance level for certain things is like now nah, you're going to shoot straight like hey yes. no that ain't it now, that's one thing i could count on pastor gail for she going to shoot straight <laughs> but, but yeah that's so good that's so good all right so now as a you're a youth pastor so 
what do you think, what are some of the ways, or even some of the ways that you've used to attract millennials to, to church? You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes it's very difficult to get millennials to get connected or, or to even come in. What are some of the things that you think are important to, to connect with millennials and, and get them to come in? It's, it's, it's hard in full transparency yeah. because, um, you know, uh, especially where I, I'm a youth pastor. So I'm a youth pastor in Phillipsburg, New Jersey. So um, our community center is open to the youth. So a lot of times um, we're, we're trying to get kids into just even want to get in the building, but also to get into their walk. So it's different versus the average church dynamic, which is like, you know, you have kind of children church around, like, you know, kids whose parents are in church. Now, we do have kids that, like, you know, their parents go to church, but usually we're trying to, you know, preach the gospel and reach the, you know, the lost through our community. I think that um, is um, getting on their level. Mm -hmm. um, now, there's a difference between getting on their level and conforming to the culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, yes. you could get on their level and not conform. Yes. So it's just that. So I think that for me, it's just, I heard Dr. Tony Evans share this story. He, um, he shared about how this gay member, someone walked up to this gay member and asked him, how are you so effective? He just said, I'm always there. Mm. When they have a game, I'm there. When they, have a, um, when, they have, when they get out of school, I'm there. Cool. And um, cool. I think that for a lot of us, especially mm -hmm. black and brown men, we're not always there. Um, we're busy chasing the bag, we're busy um, trying to get money, we're busy trying to chase titles and things of that nature, so we're not there. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that we got to be there 24-7, right. but just when it matters, right. be there. Right. And I think that, so for me, it's just that despite the difficulties of doing it, and I have a great support team in Phillipsburg, and I, I, I wouldn't trade that for the world, um, I think that we just have to be there. So for me, you, go, you come to Phillipsburg, you see a basketball game, I'm there. I'm probably the loudest person there. Um, if you had a football game, I'm there. I'm walking through. I'm, I'm like, all right, cool. Anything, I'm there. Now, my sons is playing. Yeah, you could buckle up. I'm there. <laughs> so it's just that. like, And this is the things that just so that parents could see. And, and honestly, that's how I've gotten kids to come to youth group. Um, it's just that, like, hey, you know what? Like, who's this guy that is, you know, naturally? Like, who's the guy that all these kids gravitating to? And... And then that's how I introduced myself to the parents. And, and eventually, you know, you're going to judge a man by his fruits. So when you see enough kids changing, when you see enough kids becoming their better selves, and I don't take no credit or no glory, I give it all to God, you're going to want your kid to have the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that is, that's, that's so good, you know. And I know it's a challenge, and it's difficult, you know. But I, I think that that's so powerful, you know, just making sure that you're there. Because a lot of, you know, you don't have people that are there for them. So, yes. you know, it's like they used to always say, you know, you know, people don't know, want to know, you know, until they know what you care. I'm trying to get the whole thing out. You don't out, care how much you know. Care how much you know, know right? That's exactly, how much you care. that's exactly right. Yes. So they don't want to, they don't want to, you know, just hear a sermon. They want to see it. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know yes. what I'm saying? You have to be the walking sermon. Yes, and, so and, I, the, and the thing that broke my heart is when I heard this, when I heard um, my pastor preach on it, he said that um, Gandhi and Malcolm X wanted to be Christian, but they didn't see people. But Gandhi said that the people who were Christians around him didn't represent the Bible that he read. Wow. And Malcolm X said that none of the Christians would visit him in jail, so that's why he became Muslim. Wow. So it's just that, like, you know, hey, we don't know how many lives, we're, how many souls we're missing out on by just not being present, so. That's, 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 that's a mouthful right there. That's like yes. a whole message right there. Yes. Um, you know, so what are some ways for millennials, like let's say a millennial say, I, I want to serve God, right? Yes. What are some of the ways that they can stay motivated and encouraged to seek God, especially in today's climate, like with everything going on? Um, I would say um, one thing is, uh, it's funny as you say this, I would say um, stop looking for motivation and start looking for purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every day you pursue your purpose is not going to be motivated. Mm -hmm. um, but our, our, purpose doesn't, our purpose requires more discipline than it requires motivation. Mm. Um, and and um, so I think that that will always say like you know hey like and if you're looking for motivation just look beyond yourself mm. um, so one thing that every, a lot of people see like hey they see me do this they see me do that or whatever the case may be like I told you I just came from a speech earlier today um, and one thing I recognized was that people don't see that hey I was I was serving in the food pantry um, handing out these groceries and I needed the groceries just as much as the people I was giving it to so it was just that, um, you know, like people don't really see that and that's not motivating, you know, um, but you just hanging on to a promise. And, um, you know, so it's, a, it's, a, it's beyond motivating, it's like I'm hanging on to a knowing. 
So I think that like to seek beyond the knowing and go more towards discipline and then more towards your purpose, I think that's one way. I think another thing is, man, community matters. Yeah. Community matters. As you see, uh, where um, this young man, Rayabom, um, like it cost them. His community yeah. cost them. Yeah. Um, and I think that we got to recognize how much, like I'm here, not only because I listen to the elders, but also because I have some solid people around me, like, you know, like Al, my Brody. So, you know, like we're going to always, you know, be there and, and, and go through it together. So I think that that's what matters most is having a solid community around you. Have some people that can hold the mirror to you and still love you, yeah. but still say, hey, I love you too much for you to be here. And I think that, um, I think that last, the last thing I would probably tell millennials to help them, to help them um, in their walk is, in their walk, there's no such thing as idle time. Mm. Hmm. Um, yes. Is, yes. Is um, like you know we'll, we'll think oh you know what it's it's just a, it's just a date it's just a linking mm. up with my friends, um, it's just a drink, um, it's it's just one time. And I heard this one trainer say that whenever you say to yourself, it's just, you already lost. Mm. So um, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that, like, you know, there's no such thing as idle time in this walk. Yeah. It's because even though we don't recognize it, the enemy does. It says when he flee, it said when, the, when, the, when there was, the temptation was done, it said the devil left and he wait for another opportune time. That's right. So we may not recognize opportune right. times and the, and, the, and the word for that is kairos. That was what you said. Mm -hmm. So we may not recognize a kairos moment, but the enemy does. Mm -hmm. And we have to make sure that we're on guard because there's no such thing as idle time. Every second, every minute, every hour matters to God. That's so good. That's, that's so good. That's so good. So, you know, for a millennial, how, how do you maintain, you know, you can talk about yourself personally, but also, you know, for them, like, how do you maintain a consistent prayer life? And I know you talked about discipline, but how do you kind of maintain that? Um, you know, I think that our attention span is shorter than y'all's. If we being, <laughs> we gotta keep it 100. So, you know, um, like, I'm not, like, I'm gonna keep it 100 with you, Pastor G. When I used to go in church and hear people say, we were tarrying and praying for hours, I was like, Yo, God, I love you, but I don't know what Space Jam juice they was drinking, but it's just like, pray for hours, Lord. I was like, they ain't got no job. Like, I was just thinking, like, what's going on? So I think that for me, one thing that I recognize is that this is what I take joy in, is finding ways to connect with God in unique ways. I connect with God through walking. So I'll walk, and I'm just talking with God. I think that sometimes for us, a lot of us, for millennials, we have been creeped out about just our walk. So what I mean by that is like we have been, you know, either it was too hard, too strict, or it was too loose. Mm. And then, um, so now we don't know structure. So for me, I literally come to God in conversation as I walk. That's one way I just set up time. Another way that I always do is that I pray breath prayers. It's something simple. So for me, it's just that like, I'll, if I'm like, if I look at the clock and if I see that it's past the hour, I just say, hey, God, thank you for this hour. Or, or I begin to think about that. Um, like, you know, whatever I need to pray for in that hour. Remember, I didn't pray in this hour yet because the Bible says pray continuously, pray always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember to keep that in mind um, and keep that thing going. Also, when I read my word, this is one of the things that changed my life is I pray scripture. Mm -hmm. What I yes. mean by that is that, yes. like, I will plug somebody else's name in the scripture that they may need it. So if they need healing, and I'm reading past the scripture that reads healing, that speaks on healing, I'm plugging someone's name into that. That's good. Um, that helps me out because then, for me, I get inspired by when I hear certain things because now I'm plugging somebody's name in it. And then now, I, instead of now just praying healing, I'll probably be decreeing certain things, speaking certain things over their lives because I got motivated through the scripture. Mm -hmm. I think also I think that above all else is that linking up with someone that you can't pray with. Now, the thing for millennials, this is what I was told. I don't pray with the opposite gender. Right. So like, yes. you know, like I'm not about to pray with Keisha and them. Like, you know, like, yo, hey, cause it's just like, you know, it's hard to just be in that, I don't care how much you say that they're your brother and your sister in Christ, it's kind of hard to not get your desires entangled mm -hmm. into it. Because now you're hearing someone pray for you, be fervently praying for you. And yeah. that's, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. So I yeah. think that that's, uh, that's something for me that I kind of just be mindful about. But also just like also just give yourself like a daily routine. So like you know I, I get up, and I and I just you know I get going. But I have a devotional that helps me do that. So one devotional I have is um it's called like the Bible in one year praying praying over your children. Mm. So um and at the end of the devotional it gives me something 
to pray over my children. Nice. So um, I, I use simple I use simple things just to get me going. But most importantly, I really recognize that how people are grumpy about not having coffee in the morning or not having food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could kind of tell if I haven't really been, but I don't like, but now I don't go into prayer out of obligation. I go out of opportunity. Nice. Like it's a privilege to go into prayer because I'm not going because I know, oh, I know God's going to give me something. It's like, no, I go in prayer because I recognize that if my son said he loves me but only speaks to me when he needs something, mm. I got to question his love. Mm. You know, um, if, um, if my wife said, hey, I love my God, but she only speaks to me once a month, I may be like, I don't know, I don't know honey, something's up. <laughs> so I recognize how I would want to be treated in relationship. Yeah. And that, that sparks something for me in prayer. That's so good. That's so, and, and I always say that, that prayer is a privilege. Yeah. You know, prayer is a privilege that's reserved for the believer. Yes. Because of the fact that, you know, as much as people want to believe, you know, if you're not saved, you know, God's not, the only prayer that God is listening to from the unbeliever is the prayer of repentance. Yes. Till they repent, yes. you know, he ain't yes. hearing none of that. Yes. So it's a privilege to be able to go into the presence of God and yes, know sir. that he is, he's hearing you. Yes, sir. Right? And you can get into his presence and you can have this conversation. So it is really an honor and privilege. And we don't, we don't, we don't look at it as that, yes. you know. And because we don't look at it as a privilege, it's just like, oh. It's just something I got to do today. Yes, for sure. It's, it's not just something you got to do. It is a real honor and privilege to be able to come to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and be able to, you know, come into his presence and he hears you, listens to you, and answers. Yes. It's just beautiful, you know. Yes, but, um, you know, now, while we're in this vein, you know, we're talking about prayer. What about, like, worship, right? Is there a difference that you believe between going to the house of worship and then you know, everybody's into the virtual church now, you know, yeah. because of COVID and stuff like that. And I get it. But, you know, now, now people are just, you know, not coming back oftentimes because yes. of choice. They just got comfortable, you know. Like, yes. What do you feel about that? I think a lot of people are, um, um, they're avid attendees of Bedside Baptist. Um, I think that, you know, they, <laughs> they have got real acquainted um, with, church of, <laughs> with Church of the Inner Spring. Um, but, but, but I think that here's the thing I will say is um, complacency is a, is a dangerous thing in your walk. It's a dangerous thing in your walk. And I yeah. think that, um, you know, now I believe that COVID did address something for us as believers in our walk, is that we leaned on a building for connection when it should be relationship that's, that, that stimulates connection. Yeah. So I believe that like, you know, worship should be in your house, you know, like there should be worship, but it's this worship for us, as you already know, it's not just music. When worship was first mentioned in the Bible, there was no instruments, there was no strings, there was no exactly. drums, there was no singing. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, for us, it's just that I think COVID addressed that. But I think that honestly, we have to understand, I think that a lot of us are going spiritually lazy. Like, you know, um, when, when there's certain things that, yo, you're not telling your boss, ah, I don't feel like it, I, I, I'm going to do work virtually. It's like you, you're going to get a virtual paycheck. That's going to be zero. Like, you know, so I think that um, we sometimes, we, we give God a back seat and, and, we, and, we, um, and we get lazy. That's, there's, there's no other way to call it. We get lazy and, and sometimes it, it grinds people's gears. Um, and listen now, I'm going to put a disclaimer if you genuinely feel unsafe yes, yes. in a place, right, right, right. by all means, stay home. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm, I'm huge on, like, no, if you feel like un, you, you don't, like, you, have, you need to wear a mask, pull a mask up if you need to do. But also, and I want a lot of us to get away because I feel like a lot of us are attacking houses of worship because, oh, everybody doesn't have a mask on. Mm -hmm. Or is it an anti-vax, is it anti-vax or vaccinated house of worship? And it's like, whoa. Like, you know, I understand I'm not I'm not either, you yeah. know, anti-vax, pro-vax. I'm not either. I, I'm just saying that let's not get away from the gospel, from the message. And I believe that, honestly, which goes back to that first thing that we said. Hey, when you hear don't go to church, is that you? Mm -hmm. Is that God or is that the enemy? Right. It's because um, just like God could use your isolation, so can the enemy. Yeah. So oh, I think yeah. that, like, you know, um, oh, yeah. so I think that, like, yeah, and don't ever get me wrong. Churches, I shout out to every pastor who was able to make church work uh, and let be Holy Spirit led during that time when we really had to be at home. Yeah. But we all got to be honest, it's a different experience when it you're is. inside the house of worship. And Absolutely. I think that, you know, that's, and I'm not saying that because I am a pastor, I'm saying that because I am a believer, I'm a child of God. That's what I believe. Yes, yes. 
and, and thank you for sharing that, and I absolutely agree with that. Um, so, for millennials out there, right, you know, again, they want to serve God. How do you maintain a consistent relationship with God when your friends and family are not walking that same path as you are? <laughs> oh, I think maintaining, um, I think three things you need to do. I think one is you have to recognize where you planted. You have to be solid. What I mean by that is that um, I was in, um, I was, I was away for a vacation and I saw palm trees where I was at. And I recognized that no matter how hard the wind was blowing, no matter how hard the storm was, the, the palm tree was bending, but it never broke because mm. it was planted. Mm. And I think that you got to understand like, hey, you know what, I'm planted. I'm, like, you know, despite what I'm experiencing, despite what I'm going through, I'm planted. Also, I would tell believers this, um, is that um, when you give your life over to Christ, you're part of a new family. Um, the word adoption, um, I deal with a lot of kids who are adopted, and one day God told me, hey, Mike, I want to give you a word, and I want you to really break down the true meaning of the word to the youth. And one of the words was adopted. And, when, and growing up in the, in the urban community, when you hear adopted, oh, that kid was adopted. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they're the scum of the earth. Mm -hmm. But adopted means, at its origin, chosen. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have to recognize that when your family mm -hmm. and when your friends reject you, I remember you're part of a new family, mm -hmm. and you're chosen. But guess what? When you're born again, when, when you're when you're a newborn, it took you a while to say mama. It took you a while to say dada. It took you a while to recognize that that's my aunt, that's my uncle, that's my cousins. Yeah. And just like it took you a while to recognize that as a in in your physical and in your mortal sense, it's gonna take a while for your family of believers, the people around you, to come around. Like you know, you're gonna have to yeah. be patient. You know, um, hey, like you know, it took like I was in my walk. It took a while for like Al to come along. It took a while for like all my other brothers in the faith to come along. Like you know, it, it took some time, but you know, um, but it was good. It was worth it. And and then on top of it is just that trust the process that the people that you, even though despite the fact that they reject you, you pray for them and they'll come around as well. A lot of my friends that I dealt with in the, um in the past, and God checked me on it. I used to always say, hey, these are my saved friends and these are my worldly friends. And God said, stop calling them your worldly friends. Uh. Like you know, um, either they're your friends or they're not. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and and hope and pray for your friends who you label worldly that they'll be saved. Yeah. So it's just that um. I pray for them, and Pastor G, you'll be shocked about the text messages I get about like, yo, hey, bro, can I come with you to church? Yo, bro, hey, um, can I talk to you about this? Yo, bro, hey, um, can I highlight you about this? Um, it's a blessing, yeah. and it's all because I stuck to the first principle, which was I stayed solid, um, and, and despite no matter what, it was because what I recognized was this, is that God wouldn't plant me here if I couldn't bear fruit here, mm. if I couldn't survive in this environment. Yeah. So when I was out on the West Coast, I recognized that, I don't know about you, but I never saw a palm tree in New Jersey. No. <laughs> and then I looked it up, I was like, can a palm tree survive in New Jersey? I just Googled it. Mm. And it says, no, it can't because of our temperature on a yearly basis, it won't survive here. But also when I was on the West Coast, I recognized I didn't see an oak tree. Mm. And it was just like, yo, <laughs> because oak trees, because of, the, because of how much it doesn't rain over there, it won't survive. So it's just that, like, so it's a reason why and I'm like, yo, wow, God thought to plant these trees in these specific areas and regions of the world, then God must have done the same thing when he planted me in his family, when he planted me in this city, when he planted me in this state. He planted me there for a reason, and I can grow in that area. I just got to remain planted. Wow, that's so, that's, that's so powerful. That's so powerful. Um, <laughs> that's powerful, you know. For, for the young people that are, that are, are listening, you know, because <laughs> when you plant yourself somewhere, you know, you got to allow those roots to grow deep. Yes. You allow those roots to grow deep, you won't be moved, yes. you know. But, and I know we have friends, and I know people are going through different things, and they're being challenged by that. But I like the fact that you said if you stay consistent, you know, and continue to pray for those individuals, oftentimes, you know, hopefully, hope, yes. oftentimes they, they'll begin to come around, but it's only because you stay consistent. Yes. <laughs> if you don't stay consistent, yes. then they'll never come in. Yes. So I think that's just so powerful. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. And when I mean stay consistent, also stay consistent spiritually, listen to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. A lot of us, um, I forgot his name, Pastor A.R. Bernard says that a lot of us are guilty of spiritual muggings, <laughs> um, which is like, 
we're just, because we're sitting we're on fire, we're just attacking our whole family, like, hey, you need to go, like, with the elbows, you need, you about to go to hell message, <laughs> like, you know, and it's just like, no, nah, a lot, you want to know I had to keep it 100 passages, you had to learn, a lot of the people who are motivated by my walk, they may not have given their life in front of me or like, you know, say, hey, bro, I want to give my life to God. That might happen at another church right. or another place or right. with another person. But it's just that, hey, if, if I just planted the seed, that's cool with me. So I think that, um, you know, it's just like also being, letting the spirit lead, hey, you know what, you're pressing too hard right now. Yeah. That's not going to win them over. Right. You know, um, it's the goodness of God. Like, you know, that will lead. So I think that like, nah, you know, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Know when to go. Know when there's push. Know when your moment. Know when there's a window. Pray and ask God, hey, God, is this my time? Hey, God, give me a window where I could. Yeah. And give me the words as well. And I think that that's the thing that could, you know, help out a lot with our family members. Yeah. Absolutely agree with that. You know, the Bible says we should be witnesses, right? Yes. And people think that that means that, you know, like, I'm knocking on doors. I'm going down the street. I'm talking to everybody. But that's not what being a witness is. Being a witness means I'm living a life yes. in front of people. Yes. And because I'm living that life in front of people, you know, eventually God's going to open up. And I'm going to recognize it because yes. it always goes down. Like somebody says, you know, I need prayer for something. Yes. There's your open door. Yes. I got a question for you. There's your open door. You know what I'm saying? You just yes. have to, instead of forcing it on people, wait for God to open the door. Yes. Then, then you have that time to, to minister to people. For sure. You know what I'm saying? For sure, yes. So... How do you get through a season? And, and these are questions that are people have been asking. How do you get through a season where God, you, you know God has called you. Um, you know God really has called you. <laughs> but, of course, not the people around you. And, and you're just having a, a really difficult time trying to get through that, that time period. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, wow, that's a good one. Um, if I didn't have... If I didn't have my, if I didn't have solid people around, I don't think I would have made it. I think I would have gave up. I think that is, it really matters, and really asking God to really just guide you through it. It's going to get dark. Don't ever get that twisted. This is a journey where it's going to get dark. Um, I remember one time when I, um, I had to uh, like take my youngest son with me. We was going to shop right, and uh, we we had money. We had to go to the coin star, and. Um, we had to hope that that coin store had enough money to get us a Wendy's, a Wendy's meal, like Wendy's dad. They both this was four to four for fours, um, and then get some, then get some gas, and 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 hopefully that last us until maybe I could possibly get some money together, cause I, I cause I was just, you know, figuring some things out, and those moments is dark, because now you recognizing like, yo, dang, did I hear God correctly? Am I bugging? Am I in too deep? Um, you know, and it, it gets very dark. And I think, yo, having people around you to say, yo, man, you're not bugging. Yeah. Having people around you to say, like, you know, hey, keep pushing, keep going. Um, because as crazy as it may sound, everybody wants to hear, but not everybody cares. Mm. Um, and everybody that can hear is not always not supposed to hear. Yeah. So some people that, like, it's hard. Like, I can hear your journey, but am I going to look at you the same right. after I hear it? Um, and so, like, I, like you know, I have people in my life that will stay silent. Like, you listen, look, <laughs> me and Al joke about it all the time. But there was times I had this car. We called it the Bugatti. It was a white, it was a white Volvo, the Mr. Miyagi joint, um, <laughs> white Volvo station wagon. I had no tents in it, so I'm trying to hide myself. But these windows is clear as day. Uh, I have no tents in it. And yo, every a lot of stuff y'all seeing now, me and I was talking about years ago. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just like, I just need it. You just need someone to make sure to let you know that you ain't bugging. Yeah. And sometimes, and I was walking one day, and I think that sometimes I bank so much on support. And um, and and God reminded me of the story, of, I mean, like, of the scripture that talked about how Abraham was counted as righteous because he believed. And God kind of brought me to it, like, yo, Mike, how much support you think Abraham had? Yeah. Like, believe in this crazy promise yeah. that I'm going to make him a father. Not just a father, but a father of nations. And sometimes it's, it's, it's not that we need support, sometimes it's that we need faith. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that, you know, I'm willing to die by the fact that I believe God. Like, you know, let it be said that, hey, you know, I, you're not, that's a man that believe God. I, was, I tell people all the time, when people come to my funeral, I don't want nobody mourning. I mean, of course you're gonna mourn naturally, 
but I just want people to look at my great, my, my, me and my, you know, my tombstone, me on um, my casket. I'm a little good, by the way, but we, that's for another day, another time. Um, but and look and say, Mike died empty. I don't want I, if, if people want to be at my funeral, let them talk. I don't want to say he went too early. You know, I just want to say that like, yo, nah, he gave it his all. He died empty. So people gonna be sharing jokes, memories, or how I motivated them because it's just that, you know, I laid it all out on the line. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. And thank you for sharing that and being transparent. Yes. I appreciate that. Now, I know you as a you know, as a young man, you got a lot of stuff on your plate. You know, you're a father, you're a motivational speaker, yes. you know, you're a youth pastor, you know. How do you how do you balance everything that's on your plate? Uh, T D J said it best, um, when you juggle in so many balls you gotta make sure you just don't drop the same one twice. <laughs> so so that's so that's the main thing that I <laughs> that's the main thing. So I'm not going so I just try not to drop the father ball twice. I just try, also, um, you know, my mentor always told me, yo, man, plan, write it down. So I'm, I'm weird with it now. I write down my day. I'm writing down like, yo, hey, I, this, you know, this is this, this is that, um, so I could be able to be effective. But one thing I'm learning, Pastor G, right now in this season is um, uh, this guy said it one time is don't let your mouth overload your back. Mm -hmm. So it's just that, like, sometimes I'm learning, like, uh, like you know, and, and this is why you need good people around you. Like, I, I did it today. I was like, yo. You sure you're not doing too much? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, but yeah, so yeah, yeah. sometimes it's just that learning, learning that. So I think yeah. that being honest with myself and what I'm learning is that rest is not a bad thing. Yes. You know, um, yes. You know, sometimes we always be thinking like, I got to grind, 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 go, go, go. No, rest is not a bad thing. Um, take time for you because um, I'm big on the airplane, you know, example where it's like, you know, in case of emergency, put the uh, mask on yourself and then take care of others. Yeah. And I recognize I can't pour from an empty vessel. A lot of pastors and a lot of preachers are pouring from an empty tank. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not because they're not getting filled with the word. Now they listen to the scripture. No, they're in their word. Um, they're listening to teachings. It's just that they haven't taken enough time for them. Yeah. So I think that I take time for me. Um, Self-care is good. Um, and also I have a therapist. So I'm, I'm huge in the, um, you know, just, you know, sitting down and getting that and having someone walk me through um, my thoughts outside of like, you know, my mentor and, and you know, and men and women that I have a safe space with, but it's just that like my therapist has no agenda. I ain't saying the people that are around, the men that and the men and women I have in my life have an agenda, but it's no agenda. She's paid to do that, like, you know? So <laughs> I think that that's one thing. And have fun, you know me, I'm yeah. going to have <laughs> fun, so I'm gonna laugh. And I think that that helps me out a lot. But when it comes to this balance and everything, just, you know, do my best. I try not to give, no disrespect to anybody, I try not to let my sons down. Yeah. I love my ministry, I love my house, I love my church, I love what I do, but um, I try not to let my sons down. I don't ever want them to feel like, you know, my dad didn't care. I don't ever want them to listen to a sermon and be like, yo, he's lying, mm. that's not him. Wow. So um, I tell all my youth leaders that, um, your most, I actually had one of my youth leaders when I first became a youth pastor in Phillipsburg, he came to me and he said, um, Pastor Mike, hey, listen, look, I recognize I'm coming here. I'm making time every week um, to be with you guys, but I'm not spending time with my son. Mm -hmm. And I told him, hey, the rule here is your most important ministry right now is your family. Mm -hmm. And so um, just really making sure that they're showing up for them. And so I try not to disappoint my sons. Now, I'm not going to be perfect, um, but I think that's where the thing is. So we're just not dropping the same ball twice. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so, that's so good, man. Um, as we get ready to wrap this up, is there anything that you want to share with any millennial that's out there right now? Any young person that, that is on the fence? Oh wow! And, and and really just can go either way. Like, what would you what would you say to that individual or those individuals? I would say in this time, it's so important to get to know the voice of God now more than ever, to make sure that you hear them. And I think that don't mistake companies for your companions. Some people are company, but they're not your companions. Mm -hmm. And if you really navigate that, you'll, you'll make it through this life and it'll be worthwhile. Um, it's so much more that we have to leave here. So my goal now is, I, I have a mission statement for my life. A mission for my life is that I want to see people win. And I want to see people make it to heaven. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think that that's, that's 
that's the best thing for people to do is just, you want to see people win, serve. Be a blessing. Don't make this about you. Because when you make it about you, you'll stop at you. So I've been blessed that I could really live this life and do what I do for a living. Um, there's a scripture that always stands out to me. Everybody that knows me always hear me say it. And it's that um, it says in the book of Acts that David served his purpose for his generation. Mm. So mm. I think that, like, yes. ask yourself, are you serving your purpose for your generation? And the best way to do that is to serve. The best way to do that is to get the ear and voice of God. And the best way to do that is making sure you have the right people around you. When you do that, I feel like you're unstoppable. Yeah. And I feel like that's, that's next level because this world is waiting for us. Mm -hmm. You guys carried the baton. You guys did your job. I'm not saying that, y'all. you know, the, the older generation time is done. I'm saying it's time for us to step up. Yeah. You know, it's time for us to do our job. It's time for because that's who they're waiting for. You don't need a big platform. You don't need all these things. You just need to be you and who God calls you to be. Amen. And I believe that those three keys can take you to the next level. Amen. Amen. Do me a favor. Would you, as we get ready to close, would you pray for the people out there? Yes. Just, just do that, please. Dear Heavenly thank Father, you, Father, I thank you for today, Father. I thank you for all that you're doing, Father God. I decree a special blessing over everybody that's listening here today, Father God, that your voice will become the loudest voice in their life right now. I silence the voice of the enemy. I silence the voice of doubt. I silence anything that tries to make them forfeit or cancel their assignment, Father. I pray that you are with them, Father God. You are walking them through their darkest valleys, Father God, and that they understand that this is preparing them for where they're going to, Father God. So this is not happening to them. It's happening for them, Father God. So, Father God, may you continue to prepare us, may you continue to knit us, continue to unite us, continue to mold us, but also, Father God, continue to prune us, Father God. There's anything that's in us that's not like you, remove it, Father God. There's anything else that offends us, remove it, Father God. May what you love, we love. May what you hate, we hate. May what you see, we see. May what you speak, we speak, Father God. May we not take the fact that we are your Christ, that we are your ambassadors lightly, Father God, that we are made in your image lightly, Father God, that we are the righteousness of Christ. May we never take that lightly, Father. May we move in the authority that you have called us to. And Father God, we just thank you for all the wisdom that the elder generation has poured down on us, Father God. May it not fall on shallow soil, but good soil. And Father God, may we prepare the way for those coming, Father God, and may we do our job on this land, Father God. May we leave this earth empty, Father God. May everything that we do bring you glory. So I cancel the assignment and any plans that the enemy has, Father God. But also, Father God, I pray that your Holy Spirit visit everyone that's listening to this message. No matter how they listen to this message, may it come like a rush and wind and may it fill their space and fill them, Father God. May they operate like never before in their purpose and in the will that you have caused them to. Father God, may they leave the former things behind. And may they strip off the weight that is entangling them, that's slowing them down. And may they run with endurance and perseverance for the race that you have set before them. May we run our race, Father. And I thank you for not only allowing us to run our race, but to finish our race strong. And to do exactly what you called us to do. And to do mighty works. And we decree all this in your precious and holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor. That was fantastic. You know, I pray you really got something out of today. This was really powerful. This was amazing. And, and again, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for allowing God to use you. And um, those of you that's watching out there, you should you should listen to this again. Share this with somebody. You know, this will truly be a blessing to any young person that is really on the fence. They're struggling. They're trying to figure out life. You know share it with them. All right. So we're going to get ready to close tonight. But um, I want to remind you, we have service Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Make sure you come, you know, come back to the house of God. You know, there is there is a beautiful anointing and a beautiful presence that is here in the house. And it's a beautiful thing to be connected with the rest of the brethren. It's it's awesome to watch it online, but it's even more powerful to be in the house. So come back. So let me bless you as we get ready to close. The Lord bless you keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Be gracious, merciful, and kind to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Grant you his holy peace in Jesus' matchless name. I decree over your life that you are blessed and that you can't be cursed in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord bless you. I love you. Have a great, great rest of your evening, and we will see you Sunday. God bless you. If you ever see your problem, home, solve it with this fact. If the father put you through it, trust me, he gon' have your back. If you see someone in need, meet him where they at. If you see someone that's hurt, meet him where they at. If you ever see your problem, home, solve it with this fact. If the father put you
what you do it, trust me, he gon' have some fast rings. Come fellowship with us at the Love of Jesus Church of North Newark. Led by pastors Gavin and Tanya Taylor. Where our mission is to find a need and meet it. Find a hurt and heal it. Find a problem and solve it.